scrum half must be accurate in all forms of passing, have perfect poise, and must be quick in all that he does. The simplest form of pass from the base of the scrum is the straight pass. On taking the ball after the heel, the hands, back foot and ball should be close together. The outer foot stands wide, pointing towards the fly half. As the ball is swept away, the body weight is transferred from the back to the front foot. Notice how well balanced this player is. The follow-through of the arms and hands gives speed and direction to the pass. Often, the scrum half must pass the ball away from the side of the scrum into which he has put the ball. He can do this by using the swinging pass. At the beginning, feet, hands and ball are the same as for the straight pass except that the body is facing in the opposite direction. A strong body turn is necessary to send the ball in the required direction. Notice the open stance to allow a free rotation of the body at the hips and how the shoulders, arms and hands swing through with the ball. In scrum half passing, accuracy and speed of movement are essential. Here is a swinging pass being used in a game. Now watch a dive swinging pass. This 11-year-old boy is learning the swinging pass and the straight pass. The skills can also be practiced in pairs in the gymnasium. The straight pass and the swinging pass. The middle boy has a good body swing and follow through of the arms and fingers. When the scrum half is facing in the opposite direction to the way he wishes to pass, a reverse pass may be used instead of a swinging pass. Foot positions are as for the swinging pass, but the ball is passed backhanded under the arms. The dive pass is particularly useful in wet weather or when an especially long and accurate pass is needed. object in the line-out is to obtain possession of the ball. The ball should be thrown in accurately, usually to one of the specialist jumpers, and the wing three-quarter must take great pains to throw exactly as wanted. The underhand throw can be used for short distances. It is accurate and it is easily learned by schoolboys. The one-handed push throw is favoured by many players because the action appears the same for all types of throw. The overarm throw is valuable for longer distances and can be used to clear the forwards to the fly half or centre three quarter. Here is the push throw in a game. Now let us look at the safest method of getting the ball back from the line-out 
for the scrum half. Catch the ball at full stretch height, bring it down into the body, turning away from the opposition, and feed it to the scrum half. The forward, on either side of the catcher, must watch the flight of the ball carefully, and as soon as it touches the catcher's hands, they tack round him, giving him protection from the opposition. And now with a full line-out. The forwards, up to number six in the line, bind in to prevent the opposing pack from breaking through onto the scrum half. The whole pack should know to which man the ball is being thrown, and with practice, the line-out specialist will get to know the height and speed at which the ball is coming to them. Now watch one way of taking the ball on from a line-out. Forwards adopt the same formation as for getting the ball back. But in this case, the jumper holds onto the ball and forces his way backwards through the opposing line-out. The other forwards push with him, thus increasing the impetus of the take. Another way of taking the ball on is by short passing among the forwards. Here, number six in the line takes the ball from the hands of the catcher, runs round the front, and links up with the other forwards. And with a full line, 